Management accounting offers us several ways to categorize costs. If you have experience with accounting, you will recognize many of these terms. Since our goal is to make this easy to learn, we will begin with a simple example to explain the concepts, then take a deeper dive into examples of these costs at heart heights. Project manager owns a car. This car experiences all of the cost types that we'll find on the exam and on your projects. Yearly and monthly costs that stay the same are car payments and insurance. These are fixed costs. They don't change based on use. Variable costs do change based on use. Can you name some? Fuel is an obvious one. And we wear out our wipers and tires at variable rates depending upon use. All the fixed and variable costs we've described so far are direct costs. They are clearly associated with the cost of owning and operating a car. Indirect costs of this automobile are related to ownership, such as additional costs of having a house with a two-car garage. Some utilities and property taxes can be attributed to the vehicles in project manager's family. If project manager is considering a car-free lifestyle, including moving to a new residence that doesn't have a garage, these indirect costs would be part of the cost analysis. Project manager will drive this car until it is at the end of its useful life, then donate it to charity. All the costs associated with purchasing and owning this vehicle are considered life cycle costs. Why does this matter? When purchasing a car, project manager wanted a combination of comfort and economy. Economy includes all the costs we've identified so far, plus repairs. Project manager included all these costs when comparing different vehicles. The lowest priced car had a reputation for high maintenance costs. So that was factored into the decision. You may not be using these terms to manage your own family's costs, but you have probably thought about every one of them. Here's one more term you should be able to apply. Sunk costs. Let's put it into our story. On the car's 20th birthday, project manager bought a new set of tires. A month later, it became clear that the brakes also needed to be replaced. The brake job would be expensive. Was it time to donate the car to charity? What about the new tires? How do we take the cost of the new tires into account when deciding whether to donate the car? The new tires should not be a part of the brake job versus donation evaluation. The tires are a sunk cost. Sunk costs are past expenses. Do not include sunk cost when making decisions about future costs. Let's put these terms into a project scenario. Hart Heights experiences all of these types of costs. One of their fixed costs is the lease on the office space for the project team. An example of variable costs is architectural services. It is much easier to forecast the fixed costs of the lease than the variable cost of architectural services. Both of these represent direct costs, costs that are directly attributable to the project. Of course, all the costs of the land, materials, and construction are direct project costs. What about indirect costs? Well, every Hart Housing employee costs more than just their compensation. It also includes overhead costs such as information technology and executive compensation, which is spread across all Hart Housing locations. 
consideration of life cycle costs is very important for a facility that is expected to operate for a minimum of 25 years. Design decisions take into account maintenance and utilities, two major operating costs. The experience at other Hart housing buildings influence decisions about materials for flooring and siding, for example. We saw before that sunk costs are costs that we have already experienced. Here's an example of how this affected Hart Heights. At the end of the electrical design activity, when all the wiring plans were complete, the project management team decided to evaluate using solar-powered lighting in the parking lot and building exteriors. They created a cost comparison. Notice that traditional costs include electricity, while the solar costs don't have electricity but do have additional design costs. These all represent potential future costs. They did not factor in the cost of the electrical design work that had been completed. That is a sunk cost. Remember, do not include sunk costs when making decisions about future costs. When is a cost not a cost? When it is an opportunity cost. This is one more accounting term that every project manager should understand. We use it when choosing between multiple opportunities. Opportunity cost is the value of the next best choice not selected. For example, project manager had three job offers which paid $20,000, $40,000, and $60,000 annually. Project manager chose offer C. The opportunity cost of choosing offer C is $40,000, which is the next best offer. Microsoft founder Bill Gates famously dropped out of Harvard to start Microsoft. The opportunity cost of starting a business was the college education and degree. Opportunity cost is most often associated with project selection. When we have limited resources, we know that choosing one project will prevent us from performing another project. Through these examples, you can see that the cost terms you'll see on the exam are practical and common sense. Sunk cost and opportunity cost are both concepts that apply to making choices within the project or among projects. They also apply to your family financial decisions. The best way to understand all these terms is to relate these costs to your personal finances and find examples in your own projects.